Good day and welcome to Pagepedia Videography Challenge. I'm Nkechioka for your host for today. And with me is Prince Shilon, the CEO and founder of the Omoba Yemisi Adidoyi Arts Foundation. You're welcome. Thank you very much. So, sir, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Well, I'm a prince of uh, Ake in Egberland. Okay. I'm from the land ruling house and from the family of the Ogunfayo okay. and the Shubulu, um, a subsection of the land ruling house. Okay. I, I, I am an, an engineer, a chartered engineer. Okay. I'm a legal practitioner. I'm a charter stockbroker. I, I hold a degree in business administration. Nice. And um, I'm also a chartered marketer. I have uh, transversed a lot of um, jobs, assignments, and so on and so forth, both within and outside Nigeria for some time. Okay. But um, the one I'm most known for is uh, my collection of art. Oh, wow. Uh, under the Omobaye um, Musiari in Shilon Art Foundation. Oh, okay. Nice. So the foundation, when did it start? Well, I, I registered it in uh, 2007 and it commenced uh, activities with an exhibition of Nigerian Modern Art in uh, August 2008 at the National okay. Museum of Lagos, and also combined, um, we did a combined uh, exhibition on the traditional arts of Nigeria with the Omoba Oladili Odimayo Art Foundation. So I did it, those two um, uh, things, and of course I've exhibited in photography. Uh, we have about 7,000 works of art under oh, the foundation, okay. and over 55,000 um, photographs of Nigeria's fast disappearing um, cultural festivals, which we are documenting. Okay. Because uh, we are afraid that uh, the children of the people under the mass are becoming either Okada drivers or taxi drivers in Lagos. Okay. And um, those who are not that are either lawyers, engineers, and so on. And if care is not taken, you know, our great great grandchildren will not know how we used to celebrate. Okay. Our ancestors and also our forefathers, you know, celebrated their spiritual life under the Egogo Masquerades, the Doba festivals, the Igwe festivals of Benin, the, um, the Ofala festivals of Nietzsche, the Ubuku festivals of, uh, of Nigui and Ubuku town, and so on okay. and so forth. So, we've documented all these, the Oshogo festivals as well. Yeah. Nice. So, would you say you've been an art lover right from time? Well, I started collecting art when I was in the University of Ibadan. Okay. And um, as a student. Mm -hmm. And uh, I stumbled on uh, the works of um, students of Yaba College of Technology when I went to read during holidays from the University of Ibadan. Okay. And um, I started collecting from that time onwards and have not stopped since then. Started okay. as an interest, became a passion, and is now an obsession. And I call it a glorious obsession because nice. it has allowed me to make a name and also contribute to Nigerians, uh, Nigerian um, heritage and culture. Mm -hmm. And it has allowed me to assist the world in getting to know more about Nigerian art and culture. Seeing that you're a very busy person, I mean, coupled with all you've mentioned, the degrees you've acquired, how do you spend most of your time? Like, what do you do the most on a daily basis? Well, to start with, I delegate a lot of my jobs. Uh, my law firm, for instance, mm -hmm. is under the uh, night age attorney's uh, okay. practice, which is in Ikeja. Mm -hmm. And so the lawyers there, some of them are my partners, and some who are lawyers are the ones doing the job. You know, but we meet from time to time if we have anything doing. And of course, my investment arm um, is handled by another set of people, my technical. So we all meet on a regular basis. But on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, and also my art foundation, um, you know, is uh, run online, and also activities pertaining to uh, the various things we have to do, like you know, hosting okay. scholars, hosting artists in residencies, and so on and so forth. Uh, traveling to give talks, taking part in uh, art fairs in the world mm -hmm. that are done from the main office, the holding office. Okay. Nice. So talking about the arts work and your art foundation, obviously it started like 
in a long time. You've had like challenges. How were you able to manage it? I mean, how has it been so far? Can you well, tell us about first of all, there is challenge of um, of in an environment where people tend to demonize collection of art. Okay. They see, you know, collection of art as uh, something that is, uh, you know, evil, something satanic. And so there is this challenge of trying to um, trying to sell the beauty and the richness of our culture through art. Mm -hmm. When you came in, you must have seen um, the, the, the life-size uh, work of um, Jesus Christ on, on, on one of my walls. Oh, yeah. Um, because at, at, at a point in time when people came to see me, they tended to as, you know, assume that you know, these cultural works around, and they are all demonic. So I had to create that, uh, get an artist to do that to let them realize that one can be a Christian and at the same time art. collect art. That's okay. the first challenge. Okay. The second challenge is the fact that the society itself and the people, the leaders and the followers do not seem to know the importance, or uh, appreciate the importance of art and culture in national development. And um, you find that most times um, artists are not encouraged. Yeah. Uh, and also the schools have uh, been structured such that there is very little encouragement, you know. So that's the second challenge. The third challenge, of course, is funding. Um, it's, it's not easy to to engage in um, in activities surrounding promoting art, mm -hmm. apart from just collecting art. True. You've got to you've got to host scholars. You've got to host artists in residences program. You've got to host you know a, a website to reach the world. You've got to you know sponsor workshops, okay. you've got to endow a professor chair, and so on and so forth. These are all requiring funding on a regular basis. Um, the, a lot of challenges, educational level in Nigeria, you know, you find that um, art in some, in some countries, right from when you're about five, six, seven, eight, you know, children are taken to museums. Like today, for instance, I hosted the children of a French school Oh, right here? Yes, right okay. here. I came here uh, visiting and I had to take them around my garden, to, took them inside the house mm -hmm. uh, to see works of art. I brought out works. I mean, these are children about um, maybe 10, oh. 10, 8, 9, you know, from the French school. And they asked me questions, you know, you look at art, pointed at what is this art made of, you know, show them work. So these are things that are not available to, mm -hmm. to us. I mean, to the children growing up in Nigeria. And uh, those are some of the challenges, you know. The challenges of those who become artists are not necessarily, they don't, they don't go into that profession out of, you know, having s determined and decided okay. um, voluntarily to, to go into art. Many of them either go because they have is a little talent and uh, they can pass jam for other courses they, yeah. take, they take to art. And so those are some challenges. Mm -hmm. So you find that in some cases the quality of art is getting very commercialized because the challenge of um, of patronage to, for artists, um, artists, uh, you know, go through a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, just like every, everywhere else in the world, Van Gogh, you not get anybody to buy his work until he died. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. um, but in Nigeria, you find that artists are on their own. They have to survive on their own. There is no True. policy. No, no, no regulations, no institutions. For instance, we do have a standing national gallery of art, which has prompted me to, to decide to fund Nigeria's first privately funded public museum. Okay, um, and that's where. And that's at the Pan Atlantic University. Okay, uh, it's going to be a Yemisi Shilon museum sited at the Pan Atlantic University. That's great. You know, uh, that's the that's the drawing here. That's the, the image of um, what is coming up. Yeah, you get it. Okay. As the EMC Shiloh Museum. So you find that, you know, artists, you know, in training children don't have opportunity of seeing works of great mm -hmm. artists of the past. Um, and so on. So, so that many. gives them the opportunity. Yes. Uh, this gives them the opportunity. It also gives a lot of um, people who visit my country to have something to see, yeah. enjoy, appreciate, you know, our culture, and so on and so forth. That's okay. It. Nice. So what do you wish you knew like at, at an earlier age 
And if you could change it, what would you have done differently about it? Like when you just sit and look back, I bet you'd be thinking, oh, I wish I did this or something. Can you tell us about it? Well, I, I think I wish I had uh, succeeded in some of the companies I set up for the purpose of creating employment for Nigerians. Okay, but do you think you would have done something else differently to make you succeed or something? No, I think I will repeat exactly what I am. I'm proud to be an engineer, basically. I'm okay. proud to be a lawyer. I'm proud to be a stockbroker. I'm proud to be everything. And I've had opportunities in life. I've traveled extensively. I've, I mean, I think I want to live my life all over again. Oh, so I, you wouldn't change anything about it? No, I wouldn't it? change anything. I'm satisfied. Okay. So how do you keep your feelings from clouding your decision making? For your kind of person, I bet you make decisions on a daily basis. Well, to start with, I'm a very fast thinker. Okay, nice. And um, it doesn't take me long to take decisions. And in fact, somebody just asked, somebody asked me recently, what is really your profession? Uh, are you a lawyer? Are you an engineer? <laughs> and I said, um, I am a decision maker. I take decisions. I'm very good at taking decisions. Okay. And I'm visionary by nature. I can see ahead and so on and so forth. I, I rarely take decisions without thinking. Hmm. I, I have deep thoughts. And one of the reasons why I keep animals is to understand human be nature very, very basic human nature. Okay. I, mean, I keep animals around me um, and I see their behavior, which is uh, unrefined. Yes. It's against that of human beings, which is very unrefined. So it's, it's, it allows me to understand human nature better and to empathize when people misbehave, empathize when people um, you know, do not calculatingly take decisions. So I can, you know, I can appreciate, I can appreciate them, and uh, be able to, you know, allow my 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 feelings and my emotions not to govern my decision. Okay, nice. So, how do you challenge the unknown? What you don't know, how do you go about it? I read a lot. Okay. I am somebody who uh, who reads uh, uh, very widely. I pick a subject. I I read. For instance, uh, if I meet something. You know, which I don't know. You know, the you just have to go research. No, it's very easy. You Google. <laughs> you just Google. When you Google, you get every information you need. There is nothing that you, you don't want. You want to know that you don't get. You know, these sure. things. So. Um, so that's your key. That's the key, and of course, you must continue to update your knowledge. You must read, and you don't restrict yourself to those things in which you've got qualification for. You should go deeper into things you never you never qualified for. Yeah. That way, it makes you. A, a very, very um, informed human being. And uh, again, it allows you to, to grow as evolutions and innovations are taking place. So you are not static. You know, that's, that's how I respond. Okay, great. So in the spirit of our Pagepedia tradition, you're supposed to recommend two or three people for us to connect with as a challenge. Well, I recommend... You have to look in the camera while you well, do I this. recommend... Um, Chief Binto Famitimi, the owner and founder of um, the two of them, they are owners, um, the MD and the chairman of uh, Tricontinental, Chief Binto Famitimi, right. and also Professor uh, Tony Ashu. I okay. recommend them to you. Thank you. So you have viewers and those who are looking up to you. We need like few words of advice for them. Well, I think Nigerians should spend more time educating themselves and not allow religious restrictions to govern their lives. I think we should try to update on a regular basis with a view to being able to understand our environment, understand our government, and understand our, ourselves and okay. be able to re relate better. I think we should also have some high level of tolerance and eschew tribalism and uh, ethnicity in our lives. It is dragging us back as a nation. I mean, I have a feeling that I mean, nobody, nobody knew which tribe in which you was born when you came into this world until your parents and your friends told you where you come from. And as a collector of art, I'm, I'm so detribalized because if you go through my collections, you find every ethnic group in Nigeria in my collection, apart from the global, global reach of my collection. So I think we should also learn to uh, relate with, with, with our environment and our government by giving out you know, um, the little we can offer in terms of advice 
thanks that we now have the uh, social media that gives you the opportunity to relate with your environment and the government on a, on a more regular basis. I think we should lay a lot of emphasis on developing um, education in Nigeria so that we have less and less um, uninformed citizens in our country. Um, and also it allows us to interact better within, within our various ethnic groups and you know, understand each other better. I think we should um, again try to lay less emphasis on wealth. Wealth is not, is not, it should not be the primary goal of any sane human being, um, you know, pursuit of wealth. What we should pursue is what value we can add to society and what value we can add to the, uh, the, the well-being of, um, uh, what positive value we can add to the well-being of others and contribute to those who do not have um, within society so that all of us can make collective progress. I think our collective value as a people needs, we need to work on it so that um, uh, we can, we can uh, gather more respect in the international forum and uh, within the Committee of Nations. That's uh, my own... Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Thank you really much. appreciate it. Okay, you basically had all he has to say. And this brings us to the end of this challenge. Thank you for thank having you us much. once again. It's with me, Kichio Kafo, and stay tuned and watch more videos on Pagepedia Videography. Thank you.